Hello, and thanks very much for watching again. Uh, I just wanted today to talk, uh, having said last week, uh, I was moving to look at other aspects of landscape in addition to edgelands and uh, winter moors. Um, I'm now back talking to you about edgelands, but I wanted to talk about it in quite a different way. So behind me, I've got some larger panels that I've been working on for a while, and I've got others as well um, about the edgelands. Uh, but in addition to those larger pieces, I'm also working at the other end of the scale, if you like, as a way of exploring and unpicking things. And so I wanted to share that with you today and I wanted to talk about the value of those and also uh, share a little bit about my exploration in sketchbooks as a way of understanding a little bit more about what it is that I'm particularly interested in uh, with these edgelands. And uh, what I want to do is to share some works on paper, but I'm also going to share some small work, six inches, um, very chunky panels uh, that I'm ongoing with. And those are going to be released for sale relatively soon. Um, and I'm working them in parallel with doing the bigger works. So I just thought it would be interesting, as I hadn't shared those really on here, uh, to do a little bit of a review of those and what they're all about. OK, I'll turn the camera around and uh, get going. OK, to start with, I wanted to share with you my Edgeland sketchbook. And if I can move it over so that you can kind of see in the first instance. This is just my kind of musing about the word Edgelands, actually, because I looked up in the dictionary and it basically says a strict definition is a transitional liminal areas of space to be found on the boundaries of country and town. So I then got to thinking, well, actually, I was kind of maybe misusing the word edgelands um, and the edgelands to me are how I'm using it is these wonderful stone walls and planting and wires and fence posts that form this kind of scrambled mess and so I did start musing about should I be calling them stone margins wild margins field edgelands and so on I quite like the idea of wild edges but anyway so that's just my kind of start point there and I've already talked about the colours in, in previous ones, but I then want to show you uh, these uh, drawings because this was this was a very helpful exercise, actually, if only to show me uh, and to get me thinking about what I was really interested in. And it became very clear. I was just using um, just some uh, indigo and other pencils and so on. And... These, it was very useful to do these literal thumbnails because it's really, they really did help to show me that it's not these typical views that I'm interested in. So I was writing things like that's far too busy, uh, none of these hit the mark, they're boring and conventional, I have a preference for large space and shapes versus tiny, uh, but the white space is good I've put there. Um, distorted shapes is what I want. Um, so this was really a sort of helpful start point, really. Um, and so I carried on unpicking. And this is somewhat similar, except for that here I was using uh, graphite and I was doing them quite quickly as little thumbnails. And they were just done from my kind of head, having done a lot of exploration of the Edgelands in, in, through studies and through work on location. So I was just sort of working them. And I've put here, need, need, these, need these to go to the next level of abstraction. All are far too representational. Um, but there's lots to like about them. So that was kind of useful, really. So then I started, and if I can jump to the back of the book, because this is where I do my kind of exploration, I have this thing where I list 50 things that are of interest, inspire, attract, enthrall, repel, fascinate, or hook me in um, for each thing. And I keep asking why. So I've, I won't go through it, obviously, but I've got this kind of list now of 50 things. And the things that were coming out of it uh, were things, and I've highlighted those in yellow because eventually I'll end up with just a much shorter list. Um, but the thing that I'm quite fascinated by, and I've written it here, I love the chaos, almost cartoon-like, exaggerated, fabulous range of shapes and lines and other things here. I'm enthralled by zooming in and zooming out that gets that gets 
that goes on in my view. So you've got these huge stones and then you've got the tiny landscape. So everything is kind of turned on its head really because obviously the landscape is huge, but it fits within the wires of the boundary that is next to the wall. So there's all of that sort of to play with really. And I'm fascinated um, by those extremes of these big sh solid shapes and these small insignificant landscape views. So um, lots of things um, to sort of think about. Loving the wavy versus the straight lines, the shapes of the posts and the wires, the negative space and the positive space. So all these things going on. So as a result of that, um, I then started doing some further small studies having done this list of 50, and I'm gonna share that with you now. Okay, so as a result of starting to explore through writing the things that really interested me and coming out with that initial list of 50, I then created these, which actually much uh, more reflect, I think, my interest. So there's this idea of these massive stones, the big shapes, the quirky angles, the almost cartoon-like nature of them is kind of coming through in the... This is what I was trying to reflect in these pieces. And they're just done on cartridge paper, but they're now a bit of a reference for me. So I just thought I would share those with you because they are quite interesting um, results of doing the explorations because by working on some of the square panels at 50 centimetres, I was getting nowhere. I was going around in circles trying to paint representational scenes I think and I have no idea why but it wasn't really what I was the kind of point of it so what this kind of sketchbook work and then doing these has helped me with is to clarify a little bit what I'm interested in and what I'm going to have for my paintings is a small list of the things that are important to have in those paintings um, but now what I want having shared these so these are interesting because these reflect the very initial color palette that I came up with early days so there's always this kind of green which represents the kind of landscape surrounding and then there's these lovely earthy colors of the stone and then there's this sort of like orange and brighter kind of more or more rusty colour which represents some of the sort of planting and wires and other things. Um, so what I am pleased with about these little studies is that they're starting to give me a, a language to use or to think about for the Edgelands and that's uh, one of the things I really wanted to kind of get to grips with by doing these small studies. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the six panels that I'm ongoing with that are the same size as this. OK, so here are the small six inch panels that I was talking to you about that are chunky panels and uh, so are 50, 50 uh, millimetres deep and six inches. What's that? Um, 15 centimetres or so square and um, they are have a sort of a number of layers already on them of uh, paint and papers and scratching in and marks and so on. Yeah, I will continue to work on them. They're not, I don't think uh, some of them are far away from being finished. So, um, and I'm enjoying working on these because they enable me to cover the area more quickly with the same tools as I would use with the bigger panels. And, it's a lesson in not being fiddly because you can't be too fiddly when you're working at this size. So the idea is to simplify, not to make more detailed. Okay, so this, I've just chosen one of my panels to um, have a look at and to, to share a little bit more with you. Um, so these are, as I said, uh, they're the sort of chunky 50 millimeter uh, panels, which are really nice because uh, they're better not framed and then they can either be hung on the wall as they are and I paint the sides um, or s sat on the shelf which is really nice so it's actually a very different experience isn't it I mean you would probably recall me um, standing uh, against the, the wall with the wall um, you know with the panels on the wall so <laughs> having these on the wall would probably not work so well I guess I mean I've not tried to be honest it just they just seem much better um, at a desk at a um, surface, flat surface, so that's how I've been doing them. So I kind of am doing, so So these have had a few layers on. I'm hoping you can kind of see that. There's collage, 
there's paint over, there's scratching through, there's sort of different sorts of marks, there's pencil marks, all sorts. And overall, I'm quite liking this, but there are some things that I kind of want to start to resolve. And I'm not going to do much on it whilst we're on camera, but I just wanted to sort of show you a bit more about how I do them at this scale, really. So I've kind of written myself some notes. Um, I do this w whatever the size, really. So um, the first thing I've written, and I'm, I'm, I've got quite a list, actually, but I'm what I tend to do with these is because it's so easy to overwork and overthink and get in a muddle with them because of the size, I tend to limit myself to 10 to 15 minutes at most on each one and then move on. So when I've got a few things to do and also because of the drying, I, I don't do them all at once. So one of the things I wanted to just have a look at was this idea that my darker shapes are all hanging off the edge. And I kind of want to try and resolve that. And I'm undecided as to whether to take, so this is now spanning um, top to bottom and I actually quite like it, but I am wondering whether to take that um, off and to pull some of these from the edge. So I've got some light colored paints that fit with this uh, mixture um, already made up. And um, I'm using the same palette um, that I was using all the way through that I sort of identified for the Edgelands, which I did a separate video and I'll put that in the notes. So I kind of identified my kind of colours for this Edgelands and for the malls actually. So I'm using those same colours and that's what you see on the palette at the side. And it's hilarious to see a palette that actually is overshadowing the size of the panel. Whereas usually I'm worrying that my actual um, mixing area is, is not big enough at all and I need to do them in separate bottles. So it's kind of a bit of a uh, reverse things going on, really. So the so anyway, so the first thing was about, about these shapes. The next thing was that I, I kind of like this spottiness, but I don't have it anywhere else. And I've got some extra, some additional papers. So I'm going to have a go at putting some additional in to try and give a give me that kind of balance and energy. Uh, and then the other thing I'm just going to have a look at is I want my eye to be able to move around. And at the moment, it's kind of this is is going traversing the hole. So I kind of think I want to break through somehow, maybe with some lighter paint. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to I'm going to get started. And I Hopefully you can see, you know, the sort of difference between working on this and the, the, the big panel, but also the similarities to it. So one thing I was just looking at uh, as well, just to finish on, is that I always turn these panels around. And what I was finding with this one was that whilst it's kind of OK that way, I kind of like it either the orientation I had it or, you know, sort of the opposite way to that. So upside down in a way. And I quite like that as well, that sort of side. But I wasn't too keen on just having it just through 90 degrees. I wanted to go the full 180. I thought I'd just end by coming in really close to the panel so that you can see uh, even more. And um, I'll go in close so that you can see the textural build up and the layers and so on. And there's a few layers under there. So as I said, these uh, six pieces are going to be available uh, in the next few weeks and I'll share them first with my newsletter subscribers. So I'll put the link to uh, the newsletter in the notes in case you uh, would like to sign up. And uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.